The sheriff now says murder charges could be brought in the North Carolina power outage after a person was found dead in a house with no power. Police are investigating if that death is related to the outage, but over 30,000 customers are still without power after two electrical substations were attacked this weekend. Police are still searching for those responsible. Mona Kozarabdi has the details. Hi, Mona. Diane, good morning. Authorities say the investigation is moving at a fast pace, but the stakes could be higher if that death is related to the power grid attack. If so, the Moore County Sheriff says whoever is responsible could be charged with murder. Meanwhile, residents here have spent a fourth night in the dark. Duke Energy crews have been working in 24-hour shifts to restore the power, and they say by midnight tonight, they expect to get the job done. But this blackout has taken a heavy toll on this community. Their lives have been disrupted. Schools and businesses have been closed. I spoke with an 80-year-old Army veteran who says that it was the kindness of strangers that helped him get through. Diane? All right, Mona Kozarabi, thank you. And I'd like to bring in spokesperson at Duke Energy, Jeff Brooks, for more on this. Jeff, thanks for being on. How does this compare to when a natural disaster wipes out the power? Well, you know, we're an all-hands-on-deck utility, so we certainly are ready to respond to a variety of things. It's it's somewhat similar in that that uh, we bring in the resources that we need, the equipment that we need to, to do the job. Uh, in this particular instance, that equipment is very specialized. It's, it's large. It takes some time to get into place. Uh, we've got it in place now, uh, but certainly it's an all-hands-on-deck, 24 hours a day, round-the-clock type of operation, similar to what you might see during some of our major responses. So, Jeff, what are your teams doing now to try to fix this? Are they kind of all over the area, or is this a centralized uh, solution? Well, the attack occurred in two of our substations in Moore County, so the work is primarily focused there. Over the last couple of days, we've been bringing in equipment and setting up equipment, repairing equipment. All of that work is done now. What we're focused on today is getting that equipment tested, getting it put into service, so that we can now begin, hopefully by this evening, the process of restoring the remaining 35,000 customers and, and get everybody back on by this evening. Now, Jeff, prior to this attack, several national security officials warned about the vulnerabilities of the nation's power grid. What's your take on that now? Well, you know, we take security very seriously. Uh, we are a critical infrastructure and we do have multiple layers of security in place on a daily basis that help to protect the grid, but also to help manage and contain disruptions. Uh, certainly there will be learnings from this. Uh, we are in the process of, of a multi-year grid improvement and strengthening strategy. And I'm sure there will be lessons from this that will inform that. But uh, obviously our focus today is on getting the power back on for the good people of Moore County. But clearly there's, there's a lot of conversations still to come. So what steps do you think need to be taken in order to prevent this from happening again, not just in North Carolina, but all over the country? Well, you know, I think in general, as an electric utility, the industry is focused on two things. It's on imp increasing reliability, strengthening the grid so that we can add, you know, physical and cyber barriers and other types of measures to keep accidents or, or these types of disruptions from happening. But then also it's about resiliency. It's about making sure that you have the systems and equipment in place that can help to restore power quickly uh, and, and be able to reroute power where you can get customers back up. That's a big focus of our multi-year grid improvement strategy and something that we feel is really important given both weather, climate, and you know increases in public interference. All right, Jeff Brooks, we appreciate your time today. Thank you. Good luck. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.